Uh, the next presentation is about the drag and drop function in a chronoscope, and the presentation is given by Matthias Miller Prof. Uh, the presentation is in English because Matthias is uh, from Germany. I can try in Pladutsch, uh, but I think I do it in English right now. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to compare my chronoscope with all maps. I hope I don't do, but we can all do after my talk and see where uh, similar issues are tackled a little bit differently. Um, so um, I've titled my talk um, Chronoscope from both sides of the screen. Of course, it's um, on... Here we go. Here we don't go. There we go. Uh, a triple F view from both sides of the screen. That means I will show you something from the front end. So what's the user's point of view for accessing all the maps that are in Chronoscope? And of course, some, some details from behind the screens, how this is accomplished on the back end. Um, the Chronoscope has started um, by myself as a uh, software architect and interaction designer in 2016. Um, with just four maps for Hamburg. And since then, it's under continuous development as a kind of side project that takes 150% of my time meanwhile. So it's it's really fun, but it's, it's not open source and it's not funded. It's fun, but not funded uh, by any organization so far. Um, so let's jump right in. So no slides today, but lots of live presentation. Once you start the chronoscope, um, you get a full screen uh, map of the entire world. Italy is, is uh, selected uh, as a kind of, of, of default map right now. And whenever I use my keyboard right now to be more efficient, you get a little overlay at the bottom of the screen that's just for today. It's not the usual one, but if you press the space bar right now on the right hand side, you see the uh, transparency slider move up and down. So I'm just a little bit faster doing so. Um, okay, I suppose audience is coming from Belgium and the Netherlands, so let's jump uh, to this area right now and see what's in there. I engage the layout mode and see all maps that are there. We have 838 maps right now. Of course, there's a lot of Germany, so let's see if we can prune it down a little by moving Germany down the screen. Invoke again, see we have 355 maps for the area of Netherlands and Belgium. Um, which is kind of uh, lovely and nice. You have little overlays to see what's what's there. And these little two letter signatures um, is an internal indicator where these maps are com coming from. So this is an historical map HK coming from Leipzig, for instance. LA is Los Angeles. YL is Yale. SU is Stanford University. You don't really need them, but it's a kind of identifier for all the maps because I right now support about 66 different libraries, um, open GLAM libraries to serve maps into the chronoscope. So let's move to where we are, uh, north again to orient myself. Uh, let's see what's in for, for Brugge. Um, the other tool is to show me all the maps that are relevant for the current area. Um, so I take the entire screen frame as an input parameter for a search. And these are the maps that are best fit for the current screen layout, um, uh, sorted by best fit. And well, let's take the first one. It's kind of colorful and nice move in here. And I guess some, some folks are already coming from Brugge and, and find this little city um, kind of familiar. There it is. So again, it's all IIIF. So it's an incremental loading of the, the resolution right now. Um, below there is the real Brugge, so it's a good fit right now. And if I hit my layouts again, I have a map of, of Brugge. You're probably all familiar with this one. And I want to show you some, some information overlay. So this is triggering the information stuff. So once I zoom down a little bit here, they become a little bit more crisp. So Brugge is this one. It's an historic site from the UNESCO. You also have a library in Brugge, and you also have a kind of, well, Brugge in 360 degrees. So I'm also collecting other um, online museum websites, 3D walkthroughs through museums into this map to enhance the experience for the user um, to explore the city and the history of the city. So going back to the uh, full map, you might wonder how this maps comes um, exactly here where it's uh, located right now. I also can, of course, um, 
arrange the positioning of the map with a little internal key so I don't have to jump anywhere else. I can um, move the map uh, to, to any specific location until the fit is good. And once the, the fit is good, I copy the coordinates right now into the clipboard um, and go into my, my database. I think here's my database. There's my database, so it's a, a JavaScript file. My entire database is here, and I move down to Burger. So we have here the entry for the map that you've just seen. I've met identifier DK says it's an, a Danish library map. Then I have the title, the year, the URI to the original map. I always link back to the original maps. Uh, the next one most familiar to to this audience, so it's the triple IF image link, um, and I have the quad coordinates. So these are the four corner points for my map. I don't do any any bending or special ground control points. This seems to be good enough until now. Um, if time permits and maybe some funding is around, I I might uh, sneak a little bit what all maps is doing. So of course I'm I'm jealous to all this this bending. Uh, map stuff, it's not possible right now. And in, in general, it's always the problem of how, how do you get a, a round pick through a square hole. So if we have global maps, continental scale maps on a, on a globe, then the um, uh, ground control points that look good on a, on a plane surface might not really look any good anymore once you go to a global scale. So it's, it's really a challenging part. And there are lots of other issues regarding the positioning of the map, but this is the way how, how I handle these uh, these um, issues. So here's Burger. Um, we've seen this one. And uh, to, to finish my thought, once I adjust anything here, I get the new coordinates into the clipboard, which has just happened. I can go here. I don't do it. I just show it. And I have in the clipboard pasting in the four corner coordinates um, save this file on the other um, line, and then the map positioning has been updated for my database. That's the way how I handle these cases. Um, all right, these little bodies. Don't want to hide anyway. Um, Ghent, also kind of interesting. So let's see what's in for Ghent. There are also nine maps right now for, for Ghent. Um, let's pick this one. And I have to little zoom overlay down here. Um, remove this one. I can't see my controls at the bottom. Um, let's cheat a little bit right now. I can't see my my years because of the zoom controls down here. Um, so this is a timeline for for Ghent right now. I have eight maps for Ghent. I open all of the thumbnails right now. These are the eight maps. And I can move through these time slices of Ghent by, of course, clicking these items, moving there, take the next one from 1693, click again to have a map orientation of Ghent 1780. Um, once again, uh, another orientation of the map 1888, 1913, move in a little bit because this is really lovely in a city. I've been to Ghent. It's, it's really lovely, but you know this. <laughs> I've been there though once in my life, just once. Sorry for that. Um, the harbor area, 1908, 99, a different one, and 1950. It's really heavy industrial harbor area for Ghent. Um, back to any of those map, and once again, the information layer, the chrono control. So here we are, and let's see what's what's there. We have the MIMO, Flemish Institute for Archives. Hello, waving hello to you. We have the Ghent University, also as a IIIF provider, and with a different item over here, the Universität Ghent Universitätsbibliothek. And this one has a, two little additional icons. One is for uh, searching directly at the university library, and the other one says, well, I have 14 maps from this library already uh, rectified for the chronoscope. So clicking these items says, well, just focus on the maps from the UG signature. That's the University of Ghent. Zoom out to the entire planet. Um, it's always a smooth transition because user should not be disoriented where she actually is looking in the globe. I hide these little items and see the maps from University of, of Ghent right now. And, well, yes, of course, once again, the, the little hover 
and you get the old map from 1450 a Portolan map from the Mediterranean Sea, for example. And somewhere here is Italy. Let's see below there's Italy. So this this one is the coastline of Italy going around here. You see the area at the top here is Venice. Let's see, there is Venice. So this this corner over here is Venice. Everything in one user interface and the user is always free to explore again maps from uh, 66 institutions worldwide and if i zoom out it's, it's really pretty crowded over here um, but the charming part about the user interface is that i can uh, filter by scale i just get the the city scales and the region scales and the, the country scaled maps and the other one is the filter down here Oops, that was a drag. Is the filter down here to to focus on special time frames? So these are just the modern maps of the recent of 30, 40 years, and I move back in time, maybe back to uh, to our area again, Netherlands and Belgium. And if I move back in time, I see quite quite fast all the maps that are relevant for this this time span of these 60 years right now. That was the River Rhine on the right side of the. Um, of the map display. And these are means to really not get lost in all those uh, 7,000 maps that are inside Chronoscope, but really focus on, on certain time dimensions or on certain full text search filters or on, on, on certain scales for the map. This X has everything again. So here we are. Let's go to my cheat sheet. Um, OK. Um, this talk was introduced as well drag and drop inside of Chronoscope. We haven't seen so much drag and drop yet, apart from dragging the map around and um, making you seasick a little bit. So that's not the point. You can import new stuff into the Chronoscope. Um, here's the input button. It opens a dialog and similar to um, all maps, you can paste into this dialog any kind of IIIF um, presentation manifest and everything that's um, referenced inside this manifest will be displayed. Um, so this is copy a manifest, go to Chronoscope, open this dialog, paste the manifest link and hit OK and boom, you're there. Um, the second idea is you can also use the uh, browser paste command. This works at well, as well. And the third way is it's the most charming one and the most easy one once you've done it once you don't do the other ways anymore it is to drag and drop the manifest from the archives and libraries directly into the browser tab and i will uh, do this for the rest of this talk so let's rearrange the stuff a little bit to have more space for drag and drop um, we don't need, don't need this one right now and um, go, for instance, to the, um, how do you pronounce this, monk in Belgium website, uh, the Zoken and the Bladan, so search and Bladan, to, to flip the pages probably. So here we are, you, you might know, might be familiar with this website, of course, wrong click, sorry. Now, browser window, there we are. So once I... Um, have any of these items. I can go inside. I can look where is the manifest. There's the manifest. I can copy the manifest. I can go over here. I open the dialog. I paste the manifest. I hit OK. But as said already, there's a faster way. And the faster way is I take the thumbnail over here and do my drag and drop from there and drop it into the chronoscope. There we are. So it was just one mouse action to open an entire box inside the, the chronoscope and all the pages are here. And I can very fast browse through the book and see whether this of the, whether this book is of any interest for me. Take another book, this one, drag and drop. Um, nothing is cached. Every, everything is coming live right now. See what's going on here. Uh, uh, Moses and Petros have a discussion. Both look quite angry open all the pages again, browse through the book, whether this is of interest for my, my search field, go to the next book, drag and drop, um, get 500 pages, um, 
going back to the keyboard, have next page, next page. So page down is, oh, page down, nothing to explain there, but the keyboard is supported. Stuff that um, other uh, tools tend to neglect that there are, well, lots of command keys are there. And if you're a browser, you forget to use them. So we have a kind of outline here on this page. I go into full screen. Um, not everything is top, so you can hit some uh, some buttons or move around to see, well, we have some, yeah, well, Heracles seems to be Greek mythology right now. Minerva, see what's going on here and so on. So you're free to, to move this page of an old book like it would be a map because we're talking triple IF and then it doesn't really matter whether it's a book or a map. So it's, it's really the same. And uh, you might have noticed, um, at least I tell you right now, we haven't changed anything yet in the user interface. So why, why can I display books right now um, in the map view, but I get all the pages right now. Um, and, and my trick is, sorry, that was full screen, go back, go back full screen again. <laughs> Um, the, the trick is, this is still the global map. If you zoom out, if you zoom out and twist north, then you can see, okay, we are south of Ghana and there are all my books. So we are right now here and the books display down here because, well, it's just HTML, sorry, it's just triple IF and everything on the map and boom, here we go. And we can uh, flip through the book uh, like a collection of maps. So being here, say, uh, dictation, no, not now. Uh, next page, next page. I can even read the book. So once I zoom in a little bit and I'm fluent in Latin, might be Latin, not sure. Yeah, it looked like Latin. I go to the next page and without touching anything, I go to the top of the next page. So there are some, some user-friendly um, shortcuts built in that estimate what the user is about to do. So reading this page, being familiar with the page, go to the next one without touching anything. I go to the top of the book again. Um, so what has just happened in, in terms of drag and drop from, from any of those libraries into the chronoscope window? Um, the trick is as follows. Um, this one is a hyperlink to the item page. So if I take this link, uh, copy link address, and paste it uh, into the chronoscope, I got this kind of URL. It looks kind of, um, well, complicated and nasty, but the interesting part is, that if I have this page open, one step, get the manifest here and compare the manifest that I get with the original item URL, there's some faint similarity. And this is the clue, B minus JS minus MS 89044, uh, 54. This is also used in the manifest URL. And internally in my code, I use the um, item homepage URL do some coding tricks here with regular expressions to retrieve out of the home URL uh, the manifest URL. And once the manifest URL, I can open everything that's inside. That's what's what's happening here. And to, to show you more, because both sides of the screen, I go into my code right now. Here's my code. Um, it's all JavaScript. It's all hand-coded. It's surprising to myself that it works, but it does. So it's a kind of, of object-oriented spaghetti what's happening here, but well, working on this since 2016. I look for monk, and this is the code that's working once any of these uh, URLs from monk uh, library is coming in. So um, there is some uh, regular expression testing. Once I get uh, a thumbs up, I execute my uh, regular expression over here and I get the key and then I have to do some um, there we are some replacements with uppercase and minus and hyphens and underscore and this is the way how sorry where we are did I close the other one now here this is the way how I convert this part of the URL into this one 
So I said the minus gets an underscore, the lowercase gets an uppercase, and the rest of a regular expression was to really just cut this part of the URL. Um, if things go wrong, because I can't really detect the URL that's under there, I, I do a test, and if I fail, I simply open a new window because the intent of the user is I want to see this book. So if I can't handle it, I open the item homepage instead. That's that's what's happening down here. Um, back to the live demonstration. Back to this one. Um, so we've been here. So if I get to the second book that does not conform to what I expect, I drop it over here. I get a wonderful sound and the book opens as well in a new tab. So this is the same as clicking the book itself. And now I can go to the manuscript or I've installed the triple IF detective over here and open the chronoscope from there. So one click more and I'm back into the chronoscope with 305 pages on this wonderful um, old book. Full screen again. All the books looking to the time looks good. So a um, little bit more of, of browsing what's going on here. So what I love about this um, user interface is, is really it's, it's, it's smooth, the user's orientated. I don't have to change user interfaces from browser tab to browser tab. And it's really like more like an, an Acrobat or PDF viewer. So I can, can move the pages. And, and this is lovely because there's a little flap on the page and by moving forward and backward, um, the flap opens and closes because it's just two maps, same point, so it, it looks quite okay. And scrolling uh, a little bit further down, especially really to the to the end of the book right now. I've been here yesterday already, so I know what's coming. I have a wonderful map for the Europe Mundus Pass Quarta, so a quarter of the world in a very, very old map. And if you dive in here, you have something like Hispania. So this is Spain. You have Gallia. Here is France. Um, Rome doesn't look really like a boot, but here is, is Roma in the center. Um, over here is Greece. So you might wonder, how does it look if you um, <laughs> apply some, some ground control point magic or my four corner magic right now? And especially I, I can do it because if, if I have... Um, oriented such maps already. I, I get a next page inserted in the book. So this one here with a little green icon saying, well, this section of this book that just came from, uh, from the University of Ghent has been rectified. And if I click the next page, then I'm still in the chronoscope. I move from the Atlantic Ocean, I cross Africa and I'm back to Europe. Of course, even with ground control points, this might be kind of uh, weird, but if you move here, you have Landria and below there, well, I guess that that fits. Um, yeah, let's sum it up. Um, chronoscope, um, provides a smooth user experience to 7,000 old maps. 5,000 of them have been um, georeferenced by myself. The others have box coordinates. Um, uh, another feature that I haven't shown so far is once the library offers um, box coordinates in the metadata of the IIIF manifest like Irara in Zurich or Yale does, I, I read, I parse this information. So an unknown map to the chronoscope that is dropped onto the chronoscope window will be placed roughly right once the box coordinates are coming from the library already. Um, I can handle any kind of uh, triple IF presentation manifests, and this smart drag and drop feature supports 80, libra 80 libraries. So we, we have the Internet Archive, we have Yale, we have Irara, we have, have Denmark, and, and a couple of uh, libraries, of course, in, in Germany. In, well, well, instead of naming them all, I click this open. Um, well, so there, there's my, my, my user guide for triple IF maps and books. And once I scroll down, 
of course, documentation. The, these are the, the libraries that support um, smart drag and drop. So go go there, search for anything, and use a thumbnail from the third page from their search page, and drop it into the into the chronoscope. And um, the interesting part is this is five times faster than browsing the original websites because you don't have to open the um, original page. You don't have to go to the mirror door viewer, go into full screen mode, and open the thumbnail view. Then you see, well, kind of interesting, not what I'm looking for. Then you have to close the full screen mode, go back to the search page, go search, go, sorry, go back to the search page, go to the next book, and again. And these five steps, you save them. You don't need them once you do a drag and drop of the thumbnail itself. Um, time is up. I'm happy. I hope you're happy as well. So thank you for listening, and I'm open to any kind of questions. Thank you, Matthias. Very interesting. And I like the idea of using uh, examples from our own collections. It's very fun <laughs> for us. <laughs> um, are there questions for Matthias? Uh, it seems that all was very clear. I thought it was also very clear, actually. Um, I, I stay here, so maybe we have some time in the end. Evelyn, Evelyn, hello, Evelyn. Your hand is up. Oh, hi. Yeah, I don't know if my hi. video will work because I am I'm experiencing some problems with my connection. But I I don't have a question. I just wanted to add that, um, I think the drop. Oh God, am I still uh, on the call? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay, my computer is glitching. Uh, I just wanted to add that the drag and drop feature is so wonderful because it really bypasses one of the major obstacles for reuse of images and metadata uh, in IIIF uh, format for end users. It's such an obstacle for them to go and to click on a thing that says IIIF manifest and they have no idea what that means and then have to copy it in a viewer that they never heard of. So uh, kudos to you, Matthias, for uh, the drag and drop feature. You're welcome, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, then I think we can go to the next presentation.